Hey everybody, welcome back. So in this video, I wanted to take the opportunity to talk about a mental illness that's uh, pretty severe, but it's very poorly understood. So I wanted to talk about schizophrenia. So you probably heard of a lot of different types of mental illnesses, depression, OCD, bipolar, anxiety. Well, when it comes to uh, schizophrenia, that one is pretty much at the very top in terms of severity. It um, can be very debilitating, it causes a lot of very distressing symptoms, and it can make it very, very hard to function normally because it causes one's reality to be very distorted. Character characteristic symptoms of the disease include things such as hallucinations, so you can see things that aren't there, hear things that aren't there, and any of the other five senses, like tactile sensations, like feeling things that aren't there, taste things that aren't there, and even smell things that aren't there, so like your olfactory senses. So of course, you know, that symptom in itself would already, you know, be pretty distressing if you're seeing things that no one else can and not knowing why. Well, it's also very common for somebody with schizophrenia to have other symptoms, like delusions. Delusions are very uh, fixed, very firm beliefs that people have. And despite them being false, um, they still seem to be very, like, fixed on these beliefs. Like, they may not have any evidence to support this belief, but they will still, for whatever reason, still hold this very firm belief, even though that there isn't evidence to prove it, or if there is, that there's not enough evidence to support it. And um, those can be very hard to kind of get somebody out of, because if you really feel like, you know, if you're being watched by somebody or somebody's after you, and even if you have no evidence to support that, you know, it's not uncommon for something like delusions to have things like, you know, if you feel like you're having other symptoms with it, like if you feel like people can he hear your thoughts or read your mind, if you have that in addition to delusions, that's going to be harder to, you know, convince that person that what they're believing isn't true. Which was actually why I made a separate video about, you know, thought insertion, thought, thought broadcasting, because like with psychosis, that stuff is actually pretty common. Another characteristic symptom of schizophrenia is paranoia. Paranoia often goes with delusions. Not only can you have fixed beliefs about something like, for example, somebody not following or somebody who's following you, but that can start to make you feel very paranoid, very anxious. So you can go from feeling like that's going on, but then you might start like wanting to cover your windows or hide doing things that, you know, you would want to do it in a situation where there was danger going on, which of course the difference in this case being that the danger is perceived and not actually happening. So that can, um, that can be another very distressing symptom if you feel like that you're, if you are constantly in this state where you feel like that somebody's after you and other people don't believe you, that can be very distressing. So yeah, your, uh, your reality can be very distorted, very different compared to what it actually is. And um, a lot of times they have very disorganized thinking uh, and thought patterns. So it's not uncommon for somebody with schizophrenia to kind of say things that don't make a lot of sense. They can be kind of hard to keep up with. Another very common symptom that I don't know if it's really talked about a whole lot with schizophrenia, it's called anhedonia, but basically you don't feel pleasure, you don't respond to your environment in the same way that somebody else does. Like, it's not uncommon for somebody with schizophrenia to seem very disconnected, seem very far away. It's very, very hard to get them to focus, kind of stay on task. They just seem very far away from what's going on. And, you know, to the typical person, of course, you're going to sit there and wondering, you know, what's going on in their mind, what are they thinking. But it's just very hard to communicate what's going on in your mind to somebody who doesn't understand because only you can see it. And it's a lifelong condition. Uh, a lot of times there's medications prescribed to help with uh, the psychotic symptoms and to kind of help with those. But unfortunately, this is another condition where non-compliance with medication is actually very common because a lot of these medications have very severe side effects. So, although they may help with some of the distressing symptoms, if they're causing, you know, a lot of disruptions in somebody's life, if it's making them excessively drowsy or dry mouth or, you know, kind of causing other issues. And it's not uncommon for certain medications to cause things like weight gain. They can affect other organs of your body, especially your liver, your kidneys. 
So getting those monitored frequently to be sure that, you know, your organs aren't being affected, you know, get blood tests done every so often is very imperative if you're on these medications long term. And like with any medication, sometimes you try one and it doesn't quite doesn't quite do the trick. So you may have to try a couple other ones till you find the right one because it's not an exact science and that's that's a very frustrating part of, you know, being on medications. Which is why I made a video talking about that as well, because I do feel like it's a very important topic with mental illness that people need to know about, especially if they're going to start medication. And medications can be very helpful, but like anything, you know, you just got to know a couple of things before you just kind of jump right in there. So there are a couple different types of schizophrenia. You know, kind of, the, you know, there's like the more classic type with kind of the, again, the hallucinations, the delusions, and hedonia and all that stuff. A lot of types of schizophrenia have really a lot of these symptoms, but they can manifest a little bit differently. Like when you look at something like paranoid schizophrenia, obviously that's going to focus more on kind of the paranoia and the delusions. You know, that's kind of the ones that you hear about like on the news a lot more. And of course the media blows these kind of things out of proportion. I mean, just because you have mental illness doesn't exactly mean that you're dangerous or anything. I mean, people are mentally ill and they do things they wouldn't normally do. Things that they would probably be really embarrassed of if they were in their right mind. So if you ever hear about people, if they're not in their right state of mind and they have things going on, just remember that they're people like us. They may not even know what they're doing. So even though it's easy to look at those situations and think certain things, if the, think about what that person might be feeling if they actually knew what they were doing or if they ever do kind of snap out of it and they hear about it later. You know how embarrassed they would probably be if they heard about that or if it did make the front of a newspaper. I mean, people are in very vulnerable states sometimes and they don't want that stuff broadcasted for everybody to see. It's embarrassing, especially when you're struggling. I mean, people don't like to talk about when they're struggling in general and then things like stigma make it even worse. So it's kind of something to keep in mind if you ever hear about situations like that. But yeah, so there's paranoid schizophrenia. There's disorganized schizophrenia. Again, we kind of talked about with the, the disorganized speech, the disorganized thoughts. Somebody with disorganized schizophrenia, that's probably one of those things where you would hear them kind of misplacing items a lot more, not remembering what they did with something, or if they have a lot of things, a lot of activities planned, they might kind of lose track of things, time. It can be very distressing to just have a lot going on in your life and trying to stay on top of everything because you don't always realize how busy you are and how much you have going on in your life until you try to stay on top of it, even in a typical day. You, you know, you can just kind of be all over the place trying to kind of keep yourself oriented and then you have other things going on that kind of distract you and you don't mean to forget, but, you know, everybody's human and, you know, I always tell myself all the time, I'm glad I live in the day of smartphones, otherwise, you know, I'd be losing my brain all the time if it wasn't attached. <laughs> So, and then um, one of the more misunderstood forms of schizophrenia, it's called uh, catatonic schizophrenia. And this one is very interesting. Um, so not a lot is understood about catatonia, but what catatonia is, is uh, people who have it, it, start to it starts to disrupt their bodily movements. Like, you know, you see people walking, talking, their every day-to-day -day life. People with catatonia, um, can basically become immobile they can kind of just you know I, I, okay I don't want to paint too much of a weird picture with this but like you know a lot of times they they will hold random positions for a long period of time sometimes they can become mute they're if they have any movements at all they can become very slowed down so uh, various states of mental illness for unknown reasons can cause this to happen at times with this particular form of schizophrenia, they spend probably, I would say, a pretty good portion of their time kind of not moving, not really doing a whole lot. They're just very, like, dissociated. So I feel like that with uh, catatonia, you can very commonly see this, like, in dissociative states where people are not talking to anybody, not really doing anything. They're just kind of sitting there not doing anything. Because this is a form of mental illness, like a state that somebody's in where you really honestly know that something's not right with them mentally because most people are interacting with their environments moving around breathing i mean even if it's somebody who's just kind of talking to themselves maybe they're still they're still moving they're still doing something like you're still responding to these stimuli in your environment so to speak but when you're in this kind of state you're really not and that's um i try not to use the word normal too much but that's not normal 
So that's kind of one of the indicators if you ever see somebody like that. That's kind of when you're like, okay, something's going on here because, you know, like if I'm sitting in a room and somebody turns on the light or turns off the light, I would probably, you know, I'd react to it. I would observe it. Or if somebody talks to me, I'd converse with them. I would respond to my environment. But when you're in these kind of states, you're not really responding to anything that's going on around you. You're really just kind of, you're just kind of stuck in that position. And I, it's not always like indefinite. Like it can be selective where they can come out of it for a little bit and then maybe go back to it later on. But it's very misunderstood and it can happen in many different types of mental illnesses and not just schizophrenia. It can happen with depression. It can happen with bipolar disorder. Um... It can happen in a lot of different forms of mental illness, but with this particular type of schizophrenia, it's more characteristic of like, okay, this person is kind of spending a great deal of time like this for whatever reason. So that's usually an indicator that they kind of have something more deeper going on with them mentally than you might see in another form of maybe schizophrenia or other mental illness. And they can use medications to treat it. There can be types of therapy for it. But again, it's it's one of those things where... It happens sometimes, people don't really know why, but it's it's a thing. And it can be very, I would only imagine that it's a very distressing symptom. I can't imagine trying to explain to somebody, you know, what that feels like, what's going on in your mind when that's happening. But that can happen in some forms of schizophrenia. And to my knowledge, not as common as some of the other types, but, you know, it's out there. Some people have it for whatever reason. You know, the brain's a very... Very complex organ. It's very fascinating, but then of course sometimes there are people with forms of illnesses like this and it's very sad because we don't really know what's going on. But hopefully within time, you know, with the right therapy, right medications and very, very patient professionals, hopefully they can dive right in there and see what's going on and see if they can get to, to the root of the issue. So, uh, symptoms of schizophrenia can often overlap with other forms of mental illness also. If you've ever heard of schizoaffective disorder, that one is pretty much schizophrenia and bipolar together, where it has these schizophrenia symptoms like psychosis, um, kind of being out of touch with reality, in addition to the mood symptoms you see with bipolar, like mania, depression, mixed states, so, you know, and then other symptoms with it, like pressured speech and agitation, that kind of thing. So I really hope a video like this can be very educational for somebody struggling with, with uh, schizophrenia or any relatives or anybody who knows somebody who is. Because it is a complex mental illness, but we're learning more about things every day and hopefully someday there'll be better treatment and we can raise more awareness and eliminate stigma about things such as this. Because even people with mental illness are people too. We're all learning, we're all growing every day. And every day, just try to be better than you were the day before. So, until next time, have a great day, guys.